Now, I mentioned last time during our problem that that was an idealized situation. We had an isotropic turbine, an isotropic compressor, and if they weren't isotropic, I would have to correct for that. So let's talk about what happens when I have real world situations intervening. That's when I go from an ideal situation to the actual, actual one I'm actually going to have to deal with. Now, in the ideal ranking cycle, there's no irreversibilities, okay? There's no irreversibilities. In real ranking cycles, there are. Things like fluid friction and heat loss to the surroundings are probably two of the most common sources. The turbine and your compressor are losing heat during that. This fluid friction which is slowing things down all throughout. And so because of that, an actual cycle is going to be very, very different. So I've got pressure drops. I have pressure drops in the boiler. I've got irreversibilities in the turbine and in the pump. All these things are causing issues. Now, I could try to correct for all of these. However, I would have an absolutely horrible time. We do have to still try to make this as simple as possible to be able to do our calculations with the tools that we have. Otherwise, we're going to have to use a computer to do it. And I don't think you're ready for that quite yet. So here is how we simplify the actual cycle. So we still keep it. We get rid of any pressure drops in the condenser or in the boiler. That's going to still stay along that same path. Also, let's see, actually that's it. I'm just going to make sure there's no pressure drops because then we can deal with this. And so we're taking into account then it's irreversibility in the turbine and the irreversibility in the pump. The pump is really, like it's really negligible, like typically we don't talk about irreversibilities in the pump because this difference is like minuscule, absolutely minuscule on the grand scheme of things. This difference, not so much. So just realize that when you're solving problems that the turbine is much more important. Um, when we do eventually introduce a real compressor, then it really matters, then it's important. And here it is. So these are isentropic efficiencies. They simply are saying, okay, what is the difference, or what's, you know, kind of what is the difference between my actual real world example and the perfectly simplified version, okay? A for actual, S for simplified, or you could say S for um, isentropic. But either way, there is going to be a difference there. And because of that, we're going to be losing some energy. We're going to be losing energy that we could have had because of that. So these are two equations that are really good to write down and to keep for later, because we're going to use them in quite a few problems. And yep, that's where we're going to stop for this time. So thank you so much. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.